Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the story of today's newsletter is Capability Statistics, CP and CPK, those much misunderstood capability statistics. So let's have a look at this thing. Now these two statistics help you to answer a very simple question, CP, CPK that you should be answering right at the beginning of your new product introduction process or indeed your problem solving process. And it's this, this question you should answer, can we, can we make it okay? Now I know for most of you, you are answering this question, but you are doing it informally you are doing it by observation only, where CP and CPK can help you make a much better decision. Better decisions save you money. So let's have a look typically what you're doing. Well, you're going out to your process, aren't you? You're collecting some data. By the way, this is very important that this data is hands off. You are trying to observe the natural pattern of the process. And then once you've got that data, you're trying to evaluate two things, essentially. Here's a random number generator. We work out the average of our data set. So process up to. Uh, and of course, what we want to know is the, one of the questions we've got to answer. Does the average hit the target or get somewhere close enough that we're happy? But what we've also got to do, look, is we've got to evaluate the variability. How much spread have we got in this process? Does the spread fit inside the tolerances? And that's the next thing you've got to ask. So let's just put some tolerances on this graph and we'll see where we land. Okay, so there's the tolerances look. Now, if you just use observation alone, use your common sense and just go for observation, what you're basically gonna assess now is, yeah, I'm fitting inside the tolerance, I'm hitting the, I'm hitting the target I want to hit. All's good with the world, can we make it okay? Yes, and away you go. Now typically there's two mistakes that are being made here. The first thing is this, um, often the sample size. So, let's say you've taken 15 pieces out of the process. Um, it's a poor sample size, typically, and you are saving money here. This should be between 30 and 50. If you try and save money here, you are saving just 15 pieces and 15 measurements when you are about to measure the product for 10 years. 15 pieces saved here when you're going to make a mistake and cause chaos for 10 years is not money saved. Yeah, it's an idiotic decision. Don't be half arsed. Make sure you take a proper sample size, 30 to 50. So mistake number one is that you don't take enough data. But let's have a look what's going on. So let's say the underlying distribution in the process looks like this. Put some tolerances on there. Let's say you're going to get a small defect rate. We'll say 2% in the tails here. Even if you've taken, by the way, even if you've taken a good sample size, so if we've taken 15, you're gonna sample 15 out of there, but even if you've taken 30, where are they gonna come from? Look at the shape of the thing. You know, these results out here, these things are rare. Probably sitting in the tail. That's a one in a thousand data point to get one sitting out there. Where's your 15 or 30 going to come from? Well, they're going to come from the middle. So you take a sample. Where does your data come from? Well, it comes from the middle section where most of the results are. What do you see by observation? Well, by observation, you see something that looks great. And of course, what do you assume? Look, are we going to make it okay? We're brilliant at this. Let's turn it on. Because you turn it on, what happens? The 2% kicks in, and now, instead of measuring an additional 15 or 30 pieces that you might have had measured here, now you've got to measure every one because you made a bad decision using observed data. Now let's take a look at what the CP and the CPK are going to do and how they're going to judge this situation much, much better. So, we take our data, but we don't go with observation. What we do is we use the data to make a prediction 
about data points we haven't seen yet. How do we do that? Well, we take the data and we calculate the standard deviation. We calculate sigma. Why is the standard deviation so useful to us? Because it has the power to predict the range we haven't yet seen. How does it relate to this shape? Well, like this. Any normal distribution, its true range, its predicted range, let's put this in here, is always assumed to be six times the standard deviation. And this is always going to be much wider than your observed values. It's going to predict results out here that you haven't seen yet. So once we have the predicted range instead of the observed range, now we can calculate these two statistics. So let's show you how these are calculated. And it's very simple. CP is known as the process potential. And all it basically says is, does my process potentially fit inside my tolerances? So let's draw a distribution. Let's put some tolerances on this shape. And it basically says this, how many times does the big blue thing fit inside those red lines? Now in this case, the big blue thing fits inside there once. That's a CP of one. Potentially, we fit inside the tolerance. And it's just width versus width. The width of the tolerance versus the width of the process. That is CP, width by width. Potentially, can we fit? Let's draw another one, just to get a sense of what's going on. Okay, how many times does the big blue thing fit inside the red lines? Well, this time I've drawn it helpfully, so it fits inside there twice. We have a potential equal to two. Okay, now it doesn't care about the fact that it's off center, by the way. CP is just a width versus width. But of course, we need to take into account the fact that it's centered or not. It's one of the questions we asked over here. Are we hitting the target and does the variability fit? Well, we've asked the question, does the variability fit with the CP? Now, somewhere we need to take into account, did we hit the target or not? And that's what the CPK is, because what the CPK is, CPK is the actual capability. Okay, and it does take into account the center. So let's put the center on this thing. So I drop the middle of my results down. Okay, now then, the CPK just says simply this. Please look left, please look right from the average. Whichever is the smallest figure. And of course, in this case, we are looking left. Now, because we're only going to look at half the tolerance, this time, I'm only going to ask the question, how many times does half the process fit inside that space? So how many times does the black slice fit inside that space? CPK fits in there once. So potentially, I have a potential of two. I have an actual of one. Okay, so that's CP, CPK. Now this is a prediction. Yeah, it's a prediction of what's gonna happen. It's not coming from the observed data. So it's a much deeper understanding of what's gonna happen. And it's going to predict this 2% defect rate for you. Even though you haven't seen it, all your samples could be defect free. This is still going to predict that you've got defects. Now, in all honesty, do I go to all the trouble to calculate these things these days? There is a calculation, which I haven't shown you for CP and CPK. And there's a reason for that. These days, I use software and the software draws these pictures for me. And to be quite honest, what I do is I use my common sense and I look at the pictures. So if you looked at this one, what have you got to do to make this okay? I've got to squeeze the variability in. That's going to take three months to achieve typically. 
It needs a project and a team to achieve it. If I look at this thing, can I make it okay? Well, I can, but I need to center it. Centering it takes, could take three minutes, could take three days. Depends whether it's a setting on the machine or a tool maker, having to make an adjustment to the tool maybe. This is very quick. This is hard yards. You have to be able to see these pictures. But once you can see the picture with the software, use some software to do these calculations, the software is predicting what's happened. So the prediction, the prediction of tomorrow for data that you haven't seen yet. This is a much more intelligent decision. CP and CPK saves you money and saves you effort for the next 10 years. Why wouldn't you use these things? You are going to make much more intelligent decisions if you use CP and CPK for measures of capability. If you'd like to know more about any of the concepts covered in this video or any of the other concepts covered in my, uh, my other tutorial videos, then here's my latest book, Drink Tea and Read the Paper. It covers everything you need to know about how to make sure that Six Sigma becomes world-class engineering in your company. Otherwise, if you'd like to get in touch with me, a little bit of help about Lean, a little bit of help with Six Sigma, please contact me on the email below.